Hello, good morning or afternoon or whatever time it is for you. All right, but good day and welcome back. And so this is where we left off. Um, we're looking at forms and we start out doing a simple form. And I ended it uh, with me trying to do some formatting of this form a little bit. So it looked a little bit better than just kind of trying to control the form elements, uh, UI elements on the the page, you know, I have these lined up. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, lay, um, laying out the form because we talk about layout in um, our intermediate section. And I said then that I think it's just better to use a library for layout. And I keep repeating that. So let me just move on. So let's get started and continue with basic form, some forms. So before I continue, uh, let me make sure that uh, I have everything saved here. And I'm going to commit my changes. And I can do a git status, see what I have changed here, and it looks like I'm clean. So you can see I did a commit here, simple form. Okay, so let me continue and just add some form, some more elements to this. So um, instead of trying to keep this uh, all nice in a uh, table, uh, probably just um, not do that. Okay, uh, just take too much time. So as you know, we can do a simple form or we could do a label, you know, for equals, let's say, um, name. And um, we can do, um, you know, name, for example, and then we do input type equals text. And, uh, you know, name equals name, okay? And I should put this as name so it matches these two properties here. The name my property and the input matches up here. Okay, so you know that one. And let's say I wanted to get past um, maybe something like a password or social security and I don't want the person typing it. Um, they know what they're typing. I don't want somebody else who's looking over their shoulder um, possibly being able to see it. So um, let's do label again. Um, password and password. Okay. And I'll say input um, type equals password and name password. Okay. Password. And so if I go here, um, so first let me save my page and refresh it. I uh, see the password feed here, and when I type, it does just show either X's depending on your browser or dots. And so, yes, that's my password. Um, another type of form, um, input, sorry, another type of input, there are a number of them, by the way, and you can find them all at W3C School. Um, you know, we've been there multiple times. And HTML reference, and if you actually let me go here and you scroll down, uh, there should be one that says uh, home. Then click it. So this is one that says HTML um, form, HTML form. So uh, HTML reference, but it's not showing me the form elements. So okay. By the way, they're here. Uh, let's find form. Click on form. And uh, number of form elements doesn't show all of them. But then if you click on input, the one we're talking about right now, you see a number of examples of different types of inputs that you can use. For example, the password um, with the text. And I'm going to show you a few of them. I'm not going to show you all of them, as you can see. There are quite a bit of them and uh, quite a number of them, and you, you could just get the pattern. You could see the pattern, and depending on what it is, um, you know, they're different. So, for example, if I wanted to do one for um, uh, label um, for uh, age, for example, um, I know that somebody's age is probably not going to be more than 200 years old. So, uh, input type. And I could say a range, or I could say number. Let's start with number. I could say um, name, age, minimum value, maximum value, 200. 
um, minimum value is equals to, you know, maybe zero or one or whatever, right? Um, for baby who's not had his first birthday yet, but let's say, uh, maybe if I had only one of people who signed up who were a legal age of 18 and above, like I said, the minimum age has to be that, right? And so I'll save that, refresh over here. And now I have this age box and you see it's got like a spinner on the side and the minimum value it goes to when I click the bottom is 18 and then um, maximum value is 200 when I click the top, right? And even though I can type 201, again, we uncovered it, but um, there's a way to know that um, if you have an invalid input. Okay. What about if we wanted age to look differently? There's another one called range. And basically with range, um, what you're doing is using a slider instead. So now you have this slider that goes from, you know, uh, 18 to 200. Of course, you don't see that now, but you can get an idea that it is by putting value equals, if I do 18, I should see that it's all the way on the left of there. And if I do 200, save it, I go over here and refresh, it's all the way on the right. And if I do something like 100, it should be somewhere close to the middle. Not exactly the middle, but something close, right? So there you go. So that gives you a pretty good confidence of the slider is working. <laughs> All right. Um, um, I like um, age as a spinner instead of a slider. Mm, okay. um, so I'll put it back as number. All right. So that's one, another type of input. Um, sometimes you might want to know if give somebody a choice between yes and no, something like male, female, right? For example, you might want to ask a question. That type of input is, you can do it with a checkbox. So we'll do type uh, no, name for yeah, equals um, sex, um, you know, sex, uh, let's say uh, male. We ask the question if you're male, yeah, not male that you get in there. All right, and um, input type, equals checkbox and there it is and you do name equals um, sex and so um, you can do um, I think checked and that is going to say that oh, this value is checked by default and if I refresh here here you go all right check and you know the user could check whether it's male or female all right, um, you might want to give somebody, um, might want to make two uh, selection, and so if they, it's a, if they check one, the other one goes away. So you kind of group them, right? So you might want to make this sex, um, you know, you want to make this male, and then copy, and let me paste this back here, and then female. Right, and notice. Um, let's get rid. Um, so right, that's fine. I, I I can leave the label, but I don't want to get confused. It wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. Um, and so input checkbox. Notice the checkbox is saying. Notice the name is exactly the same because I want these two to share this um, to be considered grouped together. But I, I'm not gonna check check this one by default. So both of them can be checked. And because it's here the same name, something strange is going to happen. Well, not strange. Maybe you can tell what's going to happen now. And so uh, I could turn that off. Well, actually, these guys. No, that's not what I want. Uh, all right. Um, I want them to act as a group. But I'll change it from a checkbox to a radio button. And there we go. So, and I use a radio button and I use the same name, I guess this effect. So you can only check one, you can get checked both as when I use a checkbox just now, right? So, uh, radio button. Um, okay, so 
let's see what else um i said a number of other controls like time and so on one of the controls we said at the bottom here was button and we use it this way but another way you can use a button is simply say uh, input and type equals button and that also works okay um all right uh, so then you might want a description of something so maybe you want somebody to enter uh, in note for example a description and you might want a big area so you want to do text area right and so name you know whatever description or note and columns you want to say I want this to be like a hundred columns wide and rows or many rows I want it to be yeah, maybe four rows or four line height for example is what I'm saying and you now the refresh here yeah. why am I why is my form uh, text area why is it I think all bizarre now um, take this out we cut this save refresh okay um, so I have table and then outside of this table and paste it here and see if anything happens uh, text area save refresh okay so something is wrong there with my text area um, uh, oh man I think I need for this I can do it this way because usually you next you nest the value of what's supposed to go in here so some a whole lot of text here so uh, i think that's why it doesn't want me to use the other way of closing it off yep that's why just want me to use the other way of closing it off so unlike the other elements that you can just use the simple way of closing it off here you have to actually put the end tag and even if you don't have anything in between you do it that way so uh, it's not happy usually if you have a tag that doesn't have anything inside you can do this and it's considered the same thing but this text area tag um, doesn't element doesn't like it uh, no why it's not connected anyway so there we go um, depending on your browser it might allow you to resize this even though the developer might specify I want four lines as you can see this is four lines um, you may be able to grab the ends of it and stretch it out um chrome usually yep there you go um see so chrome usually lets you do that so i can get it narrower than 100 columns but i could certainly make it bigger and i can't get it less than four but i can make it bigger so uh you can think of what you specify as the starting minimum okay uh so, so that it is for those tags now what i've done is i have some you know tags here about you know maybe person information uh, personal information and uh, so about the person you know name um, and so on password and email whatever and then I have the address so it might be nice to kind of group these things together on forms you often see like certain set of inputs grouped together okay and so there's a nice thing in HTML forms that you can use and it's called a um, you know a legend and it also goes along with a field set so so the legend gives you a caption and the field set gives um, puts a box around it so you say field set and this field set if I just grab these and I cut them throw them in here I save it I refresh see I got this nice box around it okay and so I can do a field set also for um, this guy field set I'm gonna cut this from here and I'm gonna paste it at the bottom here paste okay and let me beautify things a little bit okay um, save it, refresh, and so I have a nice box around there, right? Now, of course, I can do a break between them to give some space, but you know, you guys know to do layout already, so um, I'm not going to tell you to do layout. 
I'll try to make this a little bit. Okay, so there we go. But what you can do is you can add a legend to this also. And you could say, you know, L-E-G-E-N-D, legend. And then you can say, uh, this is um, this is personal information. Uh, this is, uh, let's put another legend here. And this is address information. And now, I go back here and I refresh. Look at that, right? The legend puts a nice little caption like on this field set, this box. Okay? So, again, our farm's, you know, looking, looking up a little bit. All right. So, what about, um, let's say for address here for state, I wanted the user to be able to, I know how many states there are. Let's say you're in America, for example, or where, whichever country you're in. You might have regions and cities and stuff you want people to be able to select from. So I'm in America. I'm going to say I want to limit the selection to not any arbitrary state. I don't want people to mistype it. So I want to put a selection box there. So the way you do a selection. So uh, let me take out this one here. Let's take out. Uh, oh, I show you date before. So this is a date tag. Let me take this out of here. Uh, name and date. Let me take those out. Um, yep, take this entire row. And let's say we go to 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 to. to uh, where is my phone? Business phone number, city, state. Okay, here. So for this, um, here I want to do a select. Right, so select and um, for selection, you have a number of options. Okay, now I'm going to show option groups in there. And so, each option you have a um, label and a value. And so, let's say the label is um, you know, Illinois, and uh, value is Alno. Uh, I'm going to use the same thing again. So one is what you see, and the other is what the the, the, the field is set to. Um, that's going to make sense in a, a bit just now. Um, and so, and you could set which one is selected. So I'm going to say, uh, paste these. Oh, uh, so save me some type in here. I'm going to paste. Paste, paste, uh, paste a few, just a few. So let's say California, California. And when we start getting into the coding, when we could actually see what value these things are set to, then it's going to make sense. But no, we're not doing any coding yet. I don't want to mix trying to teach HTML and the coding at the same time. But I'll make one exception, just to know probably if we have some time with button, just to show that you can take action on the button. Um, we could click a button and we'll pop print a message. But anyway, uh, we'll see if you have time. And so um, New Jersey, for example, I'll put on some states that I lived in. Um, and um, New York. Okay, there's just a few. All right, so let me again beautify this. And I'll do name equals um, state. Um, down, right, and so I save it and refresh. And so let me find my state, and there's my state, right? And you can see that um, I have just a selection, and I, the user can't do anything other cho than choose one of these, okay? And I could go find all this, the 50 states in America and populate it, or wherever you're doing this, you can do it. You can do the same thing for country. Uh, we know how many countries they are, about 200, yeah, give or take. And so uh, it'd be nice to just have those available to the user so they can, you know, um, think. I want to, here you have to actually click on this before you make a selection. Or if you tab over to it, then you can use your up and down arrow key to select the value, right? But there's no way to type in this box. You, you actually cannot type. So if you have a really long list, like, um, countries like 200 countries let's say give or take a few um, 
you know, it's going to be a long list of users I have to click on and then scroll through. And you could type the first letter and jump to it. So you can type like, you know, um, N and jump to the first one in N. Or I could type L and jump up or C, right? So if there are multiple with it, then it jumps to like the first one or whatever. So you could do things like that to help speed up your navigation in the selection. I hear people call this drop down or whatever. I mean, number of name, combo box, whatever. Uh, still the same thing. But the important thing here is that you you really kind of type very, uh, you, if, you, if you type, you can't see what you're typing. So you, if I type I, you don't see it. You just see the effect of me jumping to I, right? And I type N, Y, you know. Yes, if I could start, go over here and I start, but you don't see exactly what I'm typing. You don't get any feedback. I'll show you a slightly different control that give you the same kind of capability, but as you type, it, um, it's auto -com well, not quite autocomplete, but you'll see. Um, you can, it looks like an input box, just like an input box. You start typing, and then you see a selection that ma set, set of things that matches it. It filters it, okay? All right, so this doesn't filter. Even, you know, you still see the same thing, and it jump around, but the other one filters. All right, um, let's do that one. So um, to show you that one, um, that one is called a data list, and it's um, it's fairly new in HTML5. And let's say I'm gonna change this to that data list. So um, I'm gonna go back and say that I have a. So let's talk about the data list itself. So data list. These are my list of things. Uh, my selection. I have to give them ID to uniquely identify these set of things. And so it's the state. And I'm gonna leave and it's option and you know I'm gonna leave the label and value. Okay. I don't really need uh well, it doesn't matter. Let's leave it. Um value is what you're gonna um assign it and you know if if you don't have a label it will show you the same value. So let's leave it that way. And so now I'm gonna say I have an input and the type of it. Uh, I don't have to research I type, I can just say list because it's getting its value um, from this data list and it, it, it's getting from this, this data list that's called state, all right? And um, I can give this a name also. The name means that when you select something here and it's assigned to this input, how do I recognize this input when the form is submitted? So it's still state, all right? Now I could have called my my selection where I'm getting my list of value from for this input, something else. It didn't have to be the same as state states, you know. My input could be called state, but let's say I wanted to reuse the same input here, state somewhere else. Um, I might, uh, if I was asking the person for a second address, in that other place I might call it state two for address two, for example, right? So I could have street one, street two, CD1, CD2, and state two. And then I still will have list state and would reuse the same um, data list. All right, so enough talking. It's best to see it than me talking and confusing you. So there we go. And um, this browser is not rendering my input list um, properly. Um, let's see, states. Let's change the name here to like states. Um, refresh. Hmm. Oh, I know why. <laughs> I didn't end end it with the correct thing, so the browser is confused. Okay, it didn't end it properly. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, what else is going on? Let's see, option. Let me take out the labels just in case it doesn't like that. Shouldn't matter. Really shouldn't. Um, let's see if that fixes it. Maybe my, my browser, okay. So let's say, okay, no, that doesn't do it. So why, why? Huh. Uh, look at, what am I missing? So input. Oh, it's none of those things I was doing. Well, except for the, I needed to end this. Ah, there it is. It's right in front of me. Um, I didn't hand my input. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so there it is. So now as you can see, when I put my mouse over the state, I get a little arrow, right? And it should look like that selection mug that we had, doesn't it, right? But look, here's the difference. If I type in there and I type N, notice how it filters the list. So now I only have those two things to look at. So you can imagine if I had countries and it was 200 and I wanted to look for country as beginning with, you know, F, and I type it, the list would be filtered and say it's just jumping now and I still have the big whole long list of 200. So very, very different. So uh, consider using um, the data list in place of the selection just because for this um, reason that it still gives the user the same capabilities as the selection, but for very long, for uh, when you have a large number of options in there to be selected from, that they can start typing and filter and have the ability to filter. So, but other than that, it still works the same. They can choose anything other than what's in the list, right? I, I can type, um, let's say, Bob. Oh, okay, um, not Carolina, let's stick with state. I can type that, but that's not in, in in the list. So you want to kind of think about what is it that you, you, you want to be able to get from your user. Um, you know, with the other selection box, they absolutely cannot do anything else, but here they can kind of start typing and type something else, but it would help them if the list is really long. All right, so that's, let's see, I think we should end it here. Um, I wanted to show one other thing, I think, with, with buttons that you see these things have attributes, but something like, and all the input elements have different types of um, attributes, but one of them is um, the on attribute. And you can see like on abort, on blur, and all that stuff. And one of them is on click, for example, which is when you click the button, what happened? And there's this method you can call that's available in the browser. You could say, I am click, for example, we could call that method. Um, we could call the alert method and give it the arm thing. And now, um, which button was this? This is save button. And so, um, and I'll say uh, return false. No way would it return false. It's not important. I didn't have to actually say that. And so here's save. And now when I click it, you see I am click. I see that alert. Um, but it turns out you can do it for a number of things. So for example, on this input for name, I can do the same thing. I could say on. Um, and on change, for example, equals right, and um, now uh, let's go refresh, and then I type a value, and once I I remove from that field, that event fire on chair. Of course, while I'm typing. It's not unchanged, I didn't change yet. It's more like unchanging. <laughs> um, and they have events for, for that too. So you can get call back in code while the user is typing something, for example. On blurs, you know, and losing focus and so on. All right, so um, just wanted to just kind of show that, um, that big deal. We, that's not a way we're gonna really bind to the events of a field and get the value and so on. So we can use frameworks that do all that magic for you. All right. So I think that's pretty much it um, for um, what I want to show. Um, I think there, there, you can certainly go look at these guys and, you know, get some better example of some of the more things you can do like with um, even selection, uh, it's not here, but selection, you can do group, you can group these, um, into option group and so on. All right. N in the next video, uh, I think, um, I've covered pretty much most of the input tags and you can certainly figure out the rest. So I don't know, next video, we'll probably move on to, um, styling and then JavaScript. So we'll see uh, if there's any reason to continue covering. Oh, what I'll do in the next video actually is I'll show you how you can use frameworks like Bootstrap and Angular Material to do some really nice UI controls. So you really don't have to use 
this is the HTML control, and then they've been enhanced by these libraries, and I'll show you that in the next video. All right, all right, take care, and see you in the next video.